you're good fun. It's all good. You're good fun. <laughs> hey, buds. Hey, 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 buds. Uh, nice to see you. Hi, everybody. My name is Dean. We are back. I am glasses free Double today. Time. We have a whole show in store for you, an entire program, if you will. We're talking Theo Fleury and Jamie Stelay. Fire and ice a little later on today. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about Pierre Polyev's weirdo, weird wife. Ooh, she's getting in on the disinformation. She's having a lot of fun today. We're going to talk a little bit about Andrew Lawton and True North. Ooh, that'll be fun. We'll deal with that today. We'll talk about shirts. We'll talk about all kinds of stuff. Welcome to the program. I'm Dean. That's Lachlan Cross, 957 Cruise FM in Edmonton. Uh, at Lock and Cross on Twitter from the Lynn's Report, where you can subscribe wow. everywhere to the Lynn's Report. Uh, Mr. Ryan Lindley, if uh, you've got a, a little thing where you can go, I'm going to I'm gonna hit this button. I'm going to subscribe to the Lynn's Report on uh, Google, iTunes, uh, Spotify, YouTube. et cetera. Do it. I highly suggest you do <laughs> at Ryan Lindley on Twitter. And there's my man. And when I say my man, I mean he's my man. His name's Chris Rook. Chris Hi. is my right hand dude. If, if I don't have Chris, we're fucked. None of this stuff happens. It's the a whole fact. thing blows up. And the reason why I wanted to bring on Chris, because we got a lot to get to. We got Mayor Diane Tarian, Mayor Peterborough. She got her shirt. She got her fuck off fuck, fuck wad shirt. We're going to talk a little bit about that. She looks like a million bucks as well. Uh, we're going to get a little update on the money we're, we're making for parn.ca, where we can help uh, donate money to AIDS educators here in this beautiful country of ours. So we'll talk about that. But Chris is having a baby. He's right now. having a baby. Right now. No, no. No, his right wife's a baby. I'm gonna say she's like, is she like seven, eight months pregnant? Is that the deal? Is she right there? Yeah, eight months. Eight months. And his wife's time best, now. Lindsay. She's like, she's incredible. Oh, yeah. Her name's Lindsay. Your name is Lynn Lee. Uh, so so when I say Lynn's, I'm referring to her right now. Got um, it. but Chris is on his way to an OBGN appointment. He's on his way because they get the uh I, what, did, what do they do? What do they do? Do the ultrasound? Do they do the dip test? What's up? What's, what happens in those things? Uh, quick appointment. They essentially see if the baby's turned over yep. <laughs> and check weight and yep. check heartbeat, check blood uh -huh. pressure, and uh -huh. then she's on her merry way. Can I, can yeah. I give you some advice? Sure. Um, oh, listen, I know you work hard, and I know you also um, you get hard. up on your pony every once in a while, and you party hard. Right now, you look like you've been going hard for about three days. You may want to have a quick shave and maybe splash some cold water on your face <laughs> so you don't look like she just met you in the parking lot. Mm -hmm. yeah. I wasn't, I didn't, didn't think I was going to be on the here today. I came in to check some of the restream back end, and he's like, Hang on, stay for a second. I was yeah. like, I look, you look over. really, really rough. Like, I know it's a stressful thing to raise kids and all that, but. Maybe just Not take a break from yet. the bottle there for a couple of days there, eh? <laughs> hey, Rook? <laughs> I don't think now's the time to take I a break from the bottle. No. <laughs> I uh, don't deny it. Get okay, it all in now while you can. She's, yeah, she's eight months pregnant. How are things going, first of all? I mean, you know, you guys have had a good run. You've been together for a long period of time. You're in your 30s, decided to have a baby. Now you're having a baby, eight months pregnant. Um, how are you? Like, forget Lindsay. How are you feeling? That's the first time anyone's asked me that. It's always right? about her. Always see, well, about her. I know. Bro. This is the we pain can in see the ass. How you're every single your face. Yeah, every time a dude and his wife have their first child, the guy gets pushed aside. Everybody's like, "Oh, how do you sit on this cushion? Are you okay? Can I get you some gelato? No Would you like a pickle? Would you like a pickle in problem. the gelato?" And then yeah. there's the guy just standing there at the door, holding the bag, sweating fucking hung over to the tits because he hates his life and he's like i hate this no one's paying attention to me so let's get to you how are you doing chris are you okay i'm doing just fine everything's great that that, that felt like a struggle yeah did i say that did i say that right no honey <laughs> no honey, was i honestly, supposed to say it like that yeah it's funny because uh my brother-in-law and my sister are here from bc they have three kids and mm -hmm. the kids were running amok yesterday at my parents and my brother-in-law was sitting at the table and he just looked at me and he was like, you can run. You know that, right? Because they're, they're like pulling at him and he's doing this. And he's like, it's, it's not too late to leave. Yeah. <laughs> like you yeah. can do this. But no, you know what? It's been fine. It's been good. Um, I think my number one concern. <laughs> uh oh, He oh, looks uh, so rough. <laughs> he looks like shit. He looks like that's why I wanted him to come on the show because he looks like garbage. And then we're like, How are you doing, Chris, with everything? And you know what his answer is? He's about to embark on the greatest journey of his life. His answer is, It's fine. It's good, I guess. 
I'm that's good. what he what just you, said. What would you What would you guys do if you asked me how I was doing and I just broke into tears in front of everybody? <laughs> I here. Really don't want to answer that. <laughs> I don't, don't want to answer that because it might make me seem like a worse person. Yep. Uh, no, it's, it's, it's possible. It's tiring for sure. There's lots yeah. going on. Obviously, with with her doing uh, the miracle of growing life, more things fall onto me that were her responsibility. Yeah, like so what? I'm just tell me what tell me what you're looking forward to her doing again once she has this baby. Uh, mm-hmm. Logistics and planning. <laughs> overall, logistics. just <laughs> overall life logistics and planning, <laughs> I think, would be a good one. Uh, yeah. That's kind of that's, that's kind of fallen. Work. That's kind of fallen a couple forms. Days. <laughs> it's true. I had to fill out a couple hospital forms, and I was oh, like, "What the so hell is ass, going yeah. on right now?" She took a nap, and she had she uh, had to send them out. How dare yeah. she? I, you know had what? That's bullshit. She's still, she, you know, she's still capable of pulling her weight around there. That's my theory. You're yeah, not like Jed. So. Yes, bring her like, on. Let Dean tell her. Let Dean tell her. And I'll yeah, take a break yeah. from the pod. Yeah. To be Listen, honest. I'm divorced, happily divorced for a reason. Because I used to say stuff like this. Listen, I know you're eight months pregnant, but that's not that heavy. You can pick that up and bring it over. You know? <laughs> uh, I'm scaring I, I you. Push. Yeah, <laughs> I would go get her, but she's napping currently. Well, you know what? That's wrong. You're she can't. She's leaving you in the lurch. You got to pick up all this you know stuff. Time it and is? Here's, not only did not only has he had to do everything, like and I mean everything. And keep in mind, I'm a little tongue in cheek here. Not only has he had to do almost everything, mm-hmm. but on top of it, he's not allowed to cook meat in his own house right now. And he's a meat. That's guy. why you look like he's you can't like lift us. a That's paper right, bag right, right now. Efficient because if his wife <laughs> smells meat, she's like, Ugh. that's Ugh. still going on. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, don't is. you have like a but, garage or something she can live? Uh, <laughs> I thought you were gonna say, "Don't you have a garage you can cook meat in?" But you decided to get her to live there. That's even better of an idea. You're such an asshole. <laughs> oh you guys yeah. Have a garage. You know what? It's just making sure that she's comfortable, and I just, uh, I, I just feel all the rest of the shit. Like I was, I went to visit Dean on the weekend. And my uh, <laughs> he hides out here because his family lives like her family lives just around the corner. So when he yeah. comes here, what he does is he's like he like he brought the dog. He hung out. I took care of the dog for a bit. Uh, I'm the dog guy. Like everybody gives me their dog, which is really cool. It's, it's how true. you know you're trusted is when someone's like, here, you take care of the dog. So I'm like, hey, no Charlie problem. Loves so he, he, he had I love Charlie Spaniels. He's my guy. Yeah. Um, but his dog is name's Winnie brings Winnie over. And like it's supposed to be a drop off, stays for two hours during the drop off, and then when he comes back to get Winnie, stays for three more hours. And I'm like, "Don't you have somewhere to be?" He's like, "Yeah, I do." <laughs> but we're right now we're talking business. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but the dog uh, is very nervous, so I have to stay for a bit. Love you. Yeah. So the bed yeah. is uh, at, at my uh, mother and father in law's house is a twin, mm-hmm. and you guys have seen me. I'm pretty large. And we have a uh, we have a king size bed, so I went back Merge. and Lindsay uh, has a pregnancy pillow, which is basically like sleeping with an elephant trunk in the bed. So she was on the double or the twin with the elephant trunk, and yeah. Winnie was snuggled up to her. So old Chris got the floor mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> for the yeah, entire I'm telling night. You. Like that's what happens. You're in, a good man. In- New All families, kidding aside, is rough. that the dad gets the shaft more than the woman. Does she have is childbirth a bit of horrific? Some say. Is it difficult? Some say. Is it painful? That's what I hear. But the pain that you've had to endure for the past several months is something, and I just want to acknowledge it's egregious. You, okay? Yeah, it is egregious. It shouldn't be happening to you. Um, you're a good guy. I will say yeah. this. If you thought that any of this was going to change when the kid comes along and things start to get down to some sense of normalcy. Yeah. You are solid. fucking no sadly mistaken. Oh, yeah. Um, it just but, gets worse. From but here. we'll be here know, for yeah. support and mm-hmm. um, laughter. Mm-hmm. And I will much. say this. And again, I don't think this is going to make me look good at all, but that's OK. We're already in the canoe. If you start crying on a pod down the road, I will laugh at you. <laughs> yeah, me too. There will. I be would never. <laughs> you, you do. You know what happens every time you come on. Like when Lachlan brings up the fact his dad went out for smokes at the age of six, never come back. I laugh you every keep, time. You like guys keep making that number smaller. Time. I think it was eight. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the disappearing dad society. 
Yeah. Same with Lynn. When he brings up the horrific upbringing that he had, I'm like, <laughs> yeah, that's the best. That's how that's we get okay. through it, though. That's how that's how yeah, this that's works. True. Yeah, I would yeah, never I cry on a podcast because apparently, according to Lindsay, I'm void of emotion. <laughs> oh, she didn't mean it. She's just pregnant. Have you been? And I said that's just because I'm dead inside. <laughs> have you been told that a lot in the last eight months? By the way. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah 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 it yeah, got, yeah yeah. It got back yeah, to yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It got back to me one time at work when um I was having well, other people were having difficulty with me in the workplace, and um. Apparently, they were trying to diagnose me. I work with a bunch of millennials who are quick to have terms for what your psychological problem is because there's a term for everything now. Yeah. And um, so Jimmy was uh, privy to a conversation about why I am the way I am. <laughs> and uh, so the next day after the conversation that I wasn't present for, he informs me that the, um, the staff have figured out what my problem is. And it and it was childhood trauma, and we both burst out laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Tips. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no shit. That's okay. everybody's They're problem. They're letting on me this. off the hook. All the millennials in the building are letting me off the hook because apparently it's I have some childhood, childhood trauma. trauma that they know about. <laughs> I have never spent more than 30 seconds with any of these people outside the building, but they've got me figured out. They got you diagnosed. Matt Lachlan, you should have childhood spun trauma. You should have spun it right back around and told them that you were upset because they weren't using the right pronoun for you. Yeah, that's what you should have. You should have just oh, totally fuck. spun it. Yeah. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm about to meet with HR this week over something. Uh -oh. We don't need to get into that, but... Um, oh, yeah, but you can't fucking drop that. that on us. You no can't, shit. You can't say I'm gonna get I'm gonna meet with HR at work on the podcast and then go, but I don't want to talk about it. Now we well, all hold on. know what it is. Listen, what I, do don't, you do? I don't want to talk about it because I I I don't think I can. Like I, oh, I don't think okay. it's responsible for me to <laughs> give you guys the details of a Well then of a why current... would you bring it up? Why would you tease us like that? Why would you go hey, guys, to tease I got a juicy you. one? I might get fired this week. Oh, and then go, but I can't tease me. No, no, no. I'm not getting, trust me when I tell you I'm not getting fired. Um, <laughs> they don't have any. Famous last words, keep, man. Dean, Dean, Dude, keep I going. said that about eight years ago, too. There's no way Dean, they can keep fire going, because yeah. he's going to tell us if he's going. Oh, I know. He can't not, he can't not do it. He's like, when you, here's the thing that you need to know about Lachlan. Never tell him anything. And when he says, I can't say anything, if you spend about three and a half minutes, he'll give it all up. It doesn't okay, matter but hold what on. Is. Hold on. This is why I know you dicks lie to me. So when I call you guys out for shit that I know is true and I, I see the know. look on your faces, I can tell all three of you are dick liars. All of you. Here we go. Every Here we go. Like one what? of you. It's like Alex what? Jones of the North. Yeah. You've really gone full Berta, by the way. You've gone like yeah. full no. Alberta. You you like, turned into the like the Like I said, I told guy. you I know who Stone Sea Witch is, and you guys lie to me all the time. I had a conversation. No. Oh, this lady in the, I in the comment section. It. Stone Sea Witch, you, you have a major problem with her. Uh, she's a regular listener, regular commenter. She loves the show. I don't she's even been think in it's it all a the she. time. It is she's a, a friend she. of my wife's. Yeah. How dare you? <laughs> and she lives in in, in Ontario exact, and, and yeah, his wife exactly actually what... knows her. And she takes issue with you. You're such a lovable person. I don't understand why Stone Sea Witch doesn't like you, but sometimes people just don't like other people. I am okay, okay with people not liking me. It's just the way she doesn't like me. No, you're not okay with it. Includes me been, to believe no, hang on. somebody else. You've been telling us that there's Who it is. there's no way this isn't like James DeFiore or yeah. someone else in the company a, because you account. can't believe that Lins, someone won't like you. And this Lins, person I, legitimately I've just doesn't you like you. typing during the show. I was put. I was doing back end restream things. Chirons. He's doing Chirons, dude. Chirons. We, we, like right. your 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 paranoia is like it's almost Chris Guy paranoia. You've almost gone full Chris Guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, seriously. Uh -huh. Or or is it one of us? Well, that's what he thinks. That's what I. You never know. I said, do you? Or is it one lying? of us? Well, it could. Guys. So Clearly, with all the time Nova Nova I didn't pass, Brooke. yeah. Yeah, clearly, with all the time of me. my hands right now, I decided to make a burger. 
and uh, and screw with you because I got nothing yeah. going on at the moment. Because you yeah, can me see too. the bags under my eyes. That is, yeah, that I is... got my fucking screen time okay. yesterday. My Look, screen time report was now. 14 hours a day. I'm not making burner accounts just to fuck with you, dude. I've got more important things to do. <laughs> Like, seriously, <laughs> so does Ryan. He's got a full time job. He's got a full time job. James doesn't even know how to use his own Twitter account. So it's not like he's going to invent a new one just to fuck yeah. with you on the side. OK, it's just oh, someone okay. who All doesn't right. like okay, you. It's pretty. Simple. I won't block her then. No. OK. Hey, <laughs> do you guys want me to run and get the Oreo and pack Tony? Uh, yeah, in a second, I, I just want to quickly uh, bring a, an update towards the fuck you or fuck off fuck wad shirts, the uh, oh, yeah. Mayor Diana Tarion oh, shirts. Yeah, please do. So I don't know if you guys noticed this, uh, Mayor okay. Diana Tarion, uh, the mayor of Peterborough, who became world famous last week when she told all the followers of Romana de Dulo, the queen of the world, to fuck off you fuck wads. Uh, when she was uh, asked for a legitimate um, kind of official statement. So she put it out on her own Twitter handle. She's got two. She's got her own, Diane and Tarion. And then she's got another one. She's Peterborough Mayor. So she put that out on her personal. It's like, I got one thing to say. It's fuck off, fuck wads. Good news, everybody. She got a shirt. Not even the censored one. There I know is. people were freaking out yesterday. People getting angry that we got the whole fuck line of shirts. I think it was like 19 of 24 items we put up in the last two months have the word fuck like as the first word. Um, when the mayor of Peterborough comes out and she's like, hey, listen, uh, here's my shirt. Proud to wear it. We're donating it to Parn.ca, which is an AIDS awareness play. Uh, these people don't get enough funding. And so she was kind enough to say, yes, we want to do these shirts. I want to do them with you guys. Uh, and so Diane, it's much to my shock. Pick the uncensored one, the NSFW version of fuck off you fuckwads. And I'll tell you something right now. I loved her before. I'm in love with her now. Oh, this yeah. Is a she is a rock star. Isn't she? That is yep. fucking unbelievable. She's got a little Dan Levy in the background. She tagged him in it as well. I think this, <laughs> this post now has been seen something like 145,000 times. We've had a ton of orders on the actual website. It's all over her Instagram morning. as well. Her Instagram is pretty, oh, is pretty fired as well. Yeah, so this is everywhere. Yeah, look at that. Look I just, at that I just uh, shared Instagram too. At a boy. Uh, finally. It's good looking shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny today. Lachlan telling us, did you guys know? Did you guys know this? You, we should all share this. But meanwhile, we'd already done it five hours prior. <laughs> Tech wizard Locke was giving us Brian, tips on social media. I don't know media. what you dicks are doing. <laughs> I don't know what your dicks are He's doing. I just we didn't know you were driving. Out. That's all. Yeah. Um, so anyway, you can go to the shop. Here's where you can get yours, <laughs> DeanBlundell.com. You go to the shop, which is in the top of the header. You can get a bunch of stuff, and the shirts come in a bunch of different versions, ladies, men's, hoodies, uh, flags, stickers. You've got the black. You can get it in a bunch of different colors as well. It doesn't matter what it is, but you can also get the safer work version. Uh, Diane, because she's a total fucking boss, decided to go with the not safer work <laughs> version, and I love it. She's getting ready to pound out of that city hall. She's sick and tired of politics. I believe I asked her if politicians were losers, and she didn't disagree with me. So she's our, obviously got the net, and she's not interested. Uh, yeah. But listen, she had a lot to say about that very guy cause. in Peterborough, too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm kidding. I'd like to meet him. He sounds like a douche. Um, Thong man? Yeah. Not, no, a different guy. Um, but this, <laughs> this is, uh, these shirts are available for you. You can get the uh, attributed one, not attributed one. Safe for work, not safe for work. Dean Blundell shop. It's in the header. Go check it out. Uh, and I believe we've also sold a shitload of these Hail Satan shirts, which makes me <laughs> so happy. Like, super happy. Actually, I we don't only know why. sold four. I both. I think, and there's one with my face on it. It now I told you to get the one your face on the back because that's funny. Yeah. No, I didn't want that one. No one's wearing the one with the, my face in the middle of a pentagram. <laughs> no one's wearing that. People are gonna want to wear Hail Satan around. Like I got a note from a guy today, a buddy of mine who lives out west, and he's like, Dean, Bro, your that Hail Satan shirt shirt's gonna wear it to has church. your face on the back in a pentagram. No, it doesn't. I had him take it off. Hail um, had... Hail Satan. Hail Satan. <laughs> Hail, Hail Satan, Satan you're talking has about? your face on a pentagram on the back. I don't think it does. I don't think it does. Yeah, it uh -oh. does. Let me go check it, it out. Hang on one second. Uh -oh. I'm going to check it out right now. I think it has our logo, which unfortunately is your face. See, yeah, no. and we could have changed the logo maybe even if that was like the little one up at the <laughs> top back. Maybe put the pentagram in that one. <laughs> People are already sacrificing goats in our honor. I'm sure those Dean's, crazy fucks. So 
I love how Dean is criticizing the merch page for having too much fuck and then comes up with the Hail Satan shirts. So say, throw these up. Ah, <laughs> oh, dude, it's just my response to Christian nationalism. I thought yeah. I'd rally the troops a little bit. You don't have to get so angry. Too it's much. A pretty fun. smart idea, if you ask me. No, it doesn't I'm have a pentagram angry. on the back. I'm, I'm not a good. No, thank okay. you. Oh, that, there are a lot that's of Christians that are I'll angry. That. I had a. I'll fix. I had a religious <laughs> relative send me a note this week about the hail Satan shirt. Here we go. There's the back of it locked. By the way. Whoever this dude is that's modeling oh, we'll my shirt, that. great turd cutter on him. Right? <laughs> yeah, he's got a nice shitter. Yeah. Yeah, he sure does. Good for him. Anywho, he works so uh, I had that a relative call me this week. Yeah, the and the relative was like, Can I talk to you Swimmer. for a second about uh, your shirt? I go, Which one I'm like, but the one I'm wearing? And they're like, the Snoopy oh, one? Snoopy shirt? Is it my Snoopy <laughs> shirt? No. Is it the you decades need to of this retire that AD. shirt? No. Yeah, I know it's getting old and the collar's all fucked up. Anyway, I still like it though. This shirt might. So they said to, to me, this person too, said to me, saying, "I'll send you one." Thanks, buddy. I appreciate. It. I think I need a pro fight with a raccoon. <laughs> anyway, so as I'm talking to this relative, you can make fun of my old tired clothes. So on what he wears is tag Google. football league. Yeah, he slept in that last night. Looks like. Um, rookie's not baked, by the way. Justin, he just looks Fuck. that way all the time. Um, <clears throat> so this person says to me, can I talk to you about the Hail Satan shirt? And I'm like, all you want? Absolutely. Um, what it's kind upsetting of some of, uh, I don't want to talk about it. It's upsetting close relatives. We know. Uh, it's, upsetting a, <laughs> it's upsetting certain members of the family. And I'm like, mm, which ones? And they're like, this person, this person, this person, <laughs> this person, this person. This person, this person, this person. We needed another hand. Ten or twelve, yeah. And And I elected them to talk to you about it. Yeah, and I'm and great point. And so I said to them, "Have you been? Have they kind of charged you with coming to me and saying it's time to take that shirt down?" Mm, Kind of. And I went, "That's funny. Good, good for us. Good for them." Um, So, what's more important? Is it family or is it the shirt? And I go, "The shirt." And they're like, what do you mean? And I said, well, let me explain something to you. Um, You've chosen to take offense to this. It's an inanimate object that's upset you to the point where you don't want to be a family member of mine anymore. So I'm going to say this right now, and I want you to tell all of it. Those shirts are now far more important to me than a relationship with (laughs) any of you. So suck on that. Have a good night, mom. And <laughs> was it my mom? No, in my immediate family. And uh, and then and then I, I got an, an email from one of that that person's uh, family member who will remain nameless. And it's like, did you did you tell my daughter that the hail Satan shirts were more important to you than your relationship with them? And I just typed back, "LOL, sure did." <laughs> Because I haven't seen these people in 20 years, maybe 30, some of them. Some of them I haven't mm-hmm. seen since I was like 12. And I'm like, well, that explains you the haven't views. spoken to me in 35 years. Views. And what you want to yeah. do is tell me that I'm taking the shirt down. Now I've started to develop an entire Satan line. I'm going <laughs> to fucking do tank tops. I'm going to do pentagrams. I'm going to do goat's heads. I'm going to do Grandma's upside 90s. down crosses. I am going full on Satanist with our line. We're going to have a whole <laughs> Satan line because that's Throw how pillows. I'm fucking wired. I can't help it. I cannot help it. When someone tells me what to do, I'm like, excellent. Now I'm going to go 100 miles an hour in the other direction. Watch. And that's what we're doing. So we're, we've got an entire Hail Satan line coming out. Uh, do we? And it's not, it's not just, oh, yeah. And it's not just going to be uh, Hail bottle Satan openers. in collegiate font. We're doing bottle openers. We're doing key fobs. We're going to do shower caps with like devil horns on top of them. I've been sourcing all of it. I'm going to do a safe cell phone cases as well. Yeah. 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 Sure. Just homage to the, to the devil. That's all I want. Water now. bottles. All I do is sell, sell like how his family bottle. strife is now part of our business. <laughs> uh, I'm such Head a bands. fucking petty asshole. It's unbelievable. I can't help it. Uh, I seriously can't wrist help it. Wrist warmers. Yep. <sighs> Like all the wrist warmers. I can't wait for the Hail Satan fanny packs. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking to do, do a little, uh, those little soaps too and a little shampoos and stuff. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I we should go global and do it in different languages. 
Hail yeah, Satan in all different languages. Yeah. Ah, Hail Satan in Hebrew would be, be a lot funny. of fun. That should not Oof. be funny. Hail <laughs> Satan right, in Syrian. Go, What's that? Should I yeah, go, go get, get the uh, the He's Oreo really pepperoni excited. now? He's okay. so excited. Yeah. Really one. Because I'm going to go. No, no. Two, right, you gotta I go. Can't, Chris I can't, has gotta I can't go. Watch you do that, anyways. Yeah, yeah you can. Really? Go get it, Lock. I'm kind of yeah, excited about it. All right. Yeah, yeah. I'll be right back. Yeah, and they're in the fridge tell. upstairs. Yeah, I know. I he sent his right. email today. He sent us an email. He's like, "I'm going to eat these today during the show." And what he's about to bring down, ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't been listening to the program since the start for the past 25 minutes, Lachlan's wife is gone, so he's prepared his dinner. I'm not. And Chef um, Ramsey. Chef Ramsey. <laughs> and uh, the dinner that he prepared, I guess Chris is leaving. By the way, podcast brought to you by our friends at Kivlaw Defense Lawyers, kivlaw.ca. Go there today if you're in trouble legally. Seriously, these guys are the best. Uh, email Robert, Robert at kivlaw.ca today if you've got a legal issue that you want taken care of. Also, thanks to our friends at Easy Auto Financial, making it easy for you to buy a car. Financing is free. Easyautofinancial.ca for those details today. Seriously, bad credit, no credit, doesn't matter. These guys are the best. And it's all turnkey. Uh, also, Ed's Fine Imports and his Gitch. We wear them, so should you. Luxury branded boxer briefs to pouch in the front. Super breathable. You'll love them. Uh, edsfineimports.com. Gitch3 is your promo code. Here's Lachlan now. With a uh, plate of food. Uh, his wife is out of town yet again. And uh, so Lachlan's on his own. Uh, this is his uh, delicacy for today. What do you have in front of you there, Lachlan? What do you got for the well, wife? Well, hold on. I just want to see. This isn't something I'm eating because I, I don't have any food in the house. This was suggested. Somebody tagged me this morning in this. And uh, now I, I can't find um, who tagged me. They just said, hey, you should try this on the podcast today. Oh, here it is. Here it so is. did you have Hang to go on. out and source these items, like, especially today, just for the podcast? Yeah, 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 yeah. I went on my way home. It, they, I'm sorry, I lost the, the original tweet from I'll the person it. that sent it. Um, but, yeah, they had suggested, you should try this. This looks weird. It's off of effed up looking food pepperoni oreos and when i first saw it i was like oh no but then i started to think about it and i'm like that might not be the worst thing in the world so here we go all right i am gonna give it a try okay hold it daughter you tell us what it is no. yeah, yeah yeah tell us what you got there like to hold it up and show show what you it's what you've built oreo with pepperoni yeah. in it so you've still got the cream tweeted. filling in the middle but you just put a pep yeah. you, you, you pull them apart then you put like a pizza, a pepperoni uh, from like pizza, a little bag. Yeah, yeah, a little individual that's slice like pepperoni. That, that's like that, yeah, yeah. that greasy pepperoni face. too. That's Ooh, like it's that, good that pepperoni. Mushy, no, it's that mushy one. It's not even so one. It was in a tube. Yeah, like Summer it Valley was, or something like that. <laughs> so good, the mushy right. tube, tuberoni. It was in a tube. Oh, how fuck. is it? Here we the go. Salt and the sweet work together, dude. I, I I had peanut butter and bacon like about two weeks ago. I love like, that. That's I, I fucking I, I I laughed at people who used to do you know that. What? Now I, I I'm trying to throw this away my perception. Is it really? What do you it, got? It, I'm Explain not even the palate. You. Explain your, your what's going on in that defined palate of yours. What's happening? What are the flavors? What are the notes? What do you have? What do you got? What are you tasting? Well, the sweet jumps out right away. Yeah. Yeah, I bet. But I like the texture of pepperoni. I do. I mean, it's like raw pepperoni. It's like, ugh. it's not raw. Mm. It's cured. This is actually really fucking good. Really? Yeah. Oreos and pepperoni. That is uh, one of the grossest it's... things I've seen. Um, but honestly, I can't, man, I can't knock it. I like. I I think it's easy for us to all I would shit do this. on things. Would you really? There's. It's a in a pinch. It's a wildly satisfying smooshiness to the crunchiness too. Oh, it's sometimes I don't like different textures in there. Oreos to me are too sweet. I can't I can't sit down and eat a whole pack. Right? Like I don't think you're supposed to. Yeah, I don't think that's the that's not the well, goal. If you it gave me a if you gave me a bucket of of uh oatmeal raisin, uh, that's a di that's that's my night. I Come could on. sit and eat that whole thing. Mm. But do we I have that picture eat a whole... he sent us? Uh I don't know. I don't know I'll if we got a picture. It. Why do you want me to get it? I can get it, it's fine. Did he? What did he? Uh, did he send it to us in the? It's in the text. DMs. It's okay. Nice. In the text or text This chat. is actually really good. Really. 
I'm not even kidding you. Locke, you know what? Don't do it. Don't do it. He's enjoying it. I and as trailerific as it looks. I'm happy for you. He had a boy. He's Why not even looking at you. So angry, Linz. Let's let's let's. I said I'm happy angry for about you. weird shit. No, you're, you're not. not you're I'm not, not angry about it. it. I'm just. No, you're not even let's, looking let's, at the camera, Linz. I'm gonna eat this. I'm gonna eat this. Oh, okay. I am gonna eat Sorry. this whole plate. I'm not trying to. While be rude. we're doing this, is it a spicy pepperoni you have in that Oreo or no? Just a regular pepperoni. <laughs> it's not spicy. It's is got it a really? good zip to it. Mm-hmm. Mm, sweet and a little zip. Really <laughs> sweet, spicy. That's those are things that do work. Yeah, yeah. You're right, guys. Honestly, if you guys, what do you rank it out of ten? Give me a score. Give me a score for pepperoni Oreo cookie sandwich. Honestly, if if I went to the store and I bought Oreos again, like in six months, I'd probably swing by and grab a tube of pepperoni. Well, so you you would make this a regular. Like this would be this would be a thing. Stone sandwich. I don't ever wonder why people don't like me. Ever. Have you met <laughs> he me? He knows. I'm infuriating. He knows. <laughs> well, I'll give so, for you. And you I swear to God, you're choking this. You're choking this down just to piss me off. That's what you're doing. I know it. I don't know. No, I, I thought I, you weren't I'm pissed really off. It. I thought you weren't pissed off, Linz. I thought you were okay with it. I'm not. I thought you were. You're like, getting madder the more I eat. I'm, in, <laughs> I, I'm enjoying. I'm enjoying Lockless right now. See. You, you're telling I'm me not, I dare you don't have any it. weird trailer park recipes that you're like, probably don't want to be telling people that I eat this, but I do. Guaranteed there's something in your in your menu, in your life's menu that you eat that it's like embarrassing, like Lachlan right now. But by the way, Lachlan's wearing it. like He's like, hey, listen, I'm totally going for the fucking trailer park hors d'oeuvre right now. That's what he's doing. An hors d'oeuvre. That's, he's doing the trailer park hors d'oeuvre. If you ever come over I'll tell for you, dinner, I'm serving I got when I was up. Lens. Like, like this, this is something that I, you know what? I would have probably been in the same mindset back when I was a fat ass that I would have said, yeah, you know what? This is great. Cause I used to love like getting like warm butter and putting it on corn pops. So yeah, there was a fat guy there. Like that, that was a weird, good. a weird one. It was good, but it sounds fucking delicious. But this is what it sounds like. Then I realized that awesome. this is why I needed to learn more about good food. And more about mm-hmm. how food works and and things like that and 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 do good things with food and um learn that you can actually make things delicious the way they're you know meant to be and not i don't just know making a like coldering why, boiling why shit locker you, you don't have to eat this i know i know but, but it's and there's some, if you it saw somebody i didn't eating say it this, upsets be, me just, you, I, you i'm grossed angry. out by it no i'm <laughs> grossed out I can I'm see anger on your face. grosses me out. No. I just ate like you six sent, of these. They're fucking like, great. Yeah. You sent this to us today. And this yeah. picture, when I saw it, you know what I thought of? You ever see crime scene photos of like when the police take pictures of like they go into a guy. He's like 40. He's like just he just hung himself in his bathroom. And they're like, okay, we'll make yeah. sure you get, you know, catalog what was in Not the house. Not really, this Ryan. Is the picture they took. Look at this. this is the picture they took inside the fridge. This is the yeah. picture of what was in the guy's fridge right there. It is a serial killer hors d'oeuvre. Yeah. Or a trailer park hors d'oeuvre. It's, it's not like I got to side with Linz on that, but I'm not going to crap on it. I'm, I'm really trying like yesterday with the, the Tim Hortons pizza, which by the way, I got a hate mail for, for like 24 straight hours. People were like, <laughs> fuck you. Tim Hortons is the worst. What are you working? How do my teeth look? It's like the big thing. Uh, crooked. So <clears throat> we got, um... <laughs> there's no Oreo in them though. Guess what? You bring up Trailer Park. Guess who didn't get braces? <laughs> um, but I was laughing because uh, everybody was shitting on me for the Tim Hortons stuff yesterday. Because I'm mm-hmm. like, give give the pizza a chance. Give Tim Hortons pizza, the new pizza menu item, a chance. Mm. And I got peppered. Like this young lady. You can't get anything from Tim Hortons within five minutes. Worst service of all the chains. And then she replies, really? you can't even get a fucking sandwich right every single time. Tim Hortons should have <laughs> just stuck with what worked for him. Donuts and coffee. What they really need to work on is their customer service. Yeah, I get it. I have never received, I like, I get a lot of hate mail. I get a ton of it. Uh, from Diagonal, Jeremy's Pals. I got some beauties yesterday. Oh, it's kicking back stupid. on me now. So yeah. there you go. It'll come back on you. If you barf during the show, it's go to the bathroom. I got really fault. strong guts. 
Yeah, there you go. Um, <clears throat> but I've never seen but people take food so seriously. I've it's like a new world to me. Food is just a function. Like you, you know, with a guy like Lynn, it's wrong. art. To me, it's a function. To Lachlan, it's an adventure. Like you can't. It is not. Like, you're lying. I was laughing. No, seriously. You're a liar. Like doing it. I see no, how you I, get I into it. Not like you, dude. You're weird. Like you're yeah, weirdly you're, into it. You do the demi gloss. No. You do the bones. Yeah. You do the 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 fourteen hour smoke jobs. You're like, yeah. I don't have patience for that stuff. You're one of the me most either. patient food guys I've ever met in my life. Ever. I walked into Sobeys today, grabbed mm. a tube of pepperoni. A box of Oreos, went oh, home, dude. got upstairs, cut it into like eight pieces, slapped it on a plate, and headed downstairs. That was that was as much effort as I put into this. And the only reason I did this is because somebody sent me a tweet about it oh, saying you should you try this on the podcast today to see if it's good. And I'll it, send listen, you if tonight. you are a bit if you're a bit <laughs> adventurous, you know what? Listen, here's the thing. I have a rule. I have a rule about food. And it's one I've lived by for years. You never ignore food advice from a fat guy. And Linz, you were a former fat guy. If you yep. sent me something food wise, I would do it. But I was actually, I swear to God, and I wasn't doing it to annoy you. When I first saw this tweet from this individual that said, you should try this on the podcast I today. Yeah. I was like, that looks disgusting. I can't wrap my head around that and then i started to think about it because of the spicy sweet combination and i was like you know what i might not hate that i should give that a go and it's not that bad i'm going to talk my daughter into it too she's upstairs she wouldn't come down no she yeah. wouldn't try one of those tell her to live a little tell her to try a little tell her to entertain and her palate that's if that's, li if that's living a little i you need to see where your bar is set I'm sorry, but you do. Every once in a while, you got it. Man. <laughs> Every once in a while, a trip to the yeah. trailer park's fun. It's okay. Yeah. Like the yeah. other day, I made uh, you might need to go get your dog cheese on top. Away. Like 10 saltines, little, little cheese, and I put it in the microwave for 10 seconds, pulled them out, and I was eating. It was like a yeah. mini cheese pizza and a saltine. And mm -hmm. I only because I was like, I, I was like fucking super busy. I'm like, I got to grab something. So I just put a whole bunch of crackers on a plate, dumped a bunch yep. of cheese on it, put it in the microwave. In the microwave. Yeah, it. that's great. But I would never tell you that. Like, that's one of those things but would I would you go, keep would, from you. But would you go to a store and order that? A restaurant no, and order that? No. no. This is no, what we're, that's no what fucking, that's what Tim Hortons is doing. Like, there's no fucking way they're not. <laughs> they're taking a piece of dried out shitty. <laughs> He's going to puke. <laughs> <laughs> taking a piece of dried house. I don't know if you're so good. Put, I don't know if you're supposed to put that shit, like combine it as much as I had. So it is kicking back on me. Yeah, I'm sorry. I don't feel like puking though. It just I'm I'm a little gassy. I'm feeling gassy right out of the gates here. Oh my god. People wonder um, why he always has so many shit stories on the show. Well, because he I cannot wait to hear his body. Yeah, can't yeah. wait to hear tomorrow. Oh, dude, wait! I do, I do, I do void myself of the bad food that I do eat quite quickly. Like yeah. I am, um, I have a remarkable system. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Thank it, you. Yeah. Um, speaking of big shits, did you see uh, Pierre Polyev's wife uh, tweet that True North article, uh, which has been soundly debunked? Did you see Pierre? She's getting in on it. I actually too. missed Anna it. Polyev, you didn't see it. No, I missed oh it. Oh my fucking god, it was funny. I laughed and laughed and laughed because you know how yesterday and it was trending for like three straight days. Um <laughs> Pierre Polyev shook hands with Jeremy McKenzie in this yeah. lineup. As you can see, yeah. everybody's fucking losing their minds over it. I've got two opinions. They're both extremists, both fucking weirdos. Who gives a shit? That's I really don't care. But the hard left and every other person out there is going. You have to denounce him. You have to denounce him and all of his fucking weapons charges and the group of extremists that he represents at Diagonal, which, by the way, fucking makes me laugh every time I say it because they got the name out of, oh, if you just go diagonal from uh, from Alaska all the way down to Florida, that's that's our country, right? That's how you do it. And I'm like, oh, fuck, I guess real clever name. Um, but anyway, so because Pierre was getting dragged all day long yesterday, and it was like a big fucking story, and some real fucking heavy hitters came out and were like, dude, you should probably denounce extremism and hatred. And not a word. But what they did do is commission a whole bunch of shit post pieces from different outlets like Rebel News. And of course, Andrew Lawton at True North, which is legitimately 
an absolute shithole of disinformation. And mm -hmm. so what did they do? Well, interesting is our girl, Anna uh, Polyev, who is Pierre's wife. Mm -hmm. um, did I call her a beard? Yeah, I think I did. Did I call her? I think I did call her a beard, if I'm not mistaken. Um, she decided that it was time to help her she husband wants out. to be called? I, I, like maybe I check her check her pronouns on the Twitter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All back to the pronoun thing. Um, so let me just put this up on the screen so you can have a look at it now. And then we'll kind of debunk it. But this is like this is one of those things that happens where you're like, you got to be fucking kidding me. This is this is like childish, the most childish shit I have ever seen in my fucking life. This is like when someone shit posts me about getting fired from the edge 10 years ago or mm -hmm. getting in trouble with the CBSC for making fun of Justin Bieber and they call you a child sexualizer. It's the yeah. twisting of literal information or sometimes really bad information to be able to put it out there in the terms of what about ism, which is like, oh, yeah, well, my husband shook hands with an extremist and a guy who represents this crazy group of bastards who walk around with a AR-15s and shotguns and threaten female reporters and act like assholes in the name of alt-right supremacy in this country. Oh. How about this, Justin Trudeau? She literally, there you go again. She literally put this up. This is uh, his wife, Anita. I believe they just call her Anna Polyev. Uh, oh, she says in the tweet, Seven times Justin Trudeau met with pedophiles, terrorists, and extremists, oh. courtesy of True North. Now, is that, that is fucking unbelievable, isn't it? <laughs> like, that is fucking crazy. This is like taking a National Enquirer article done by someone 50 times dumber than the people at the National Enquirer, and he's a fucking racist, anti-Muslim, gay-hating asshole who owns it. His name is Andrew Lawton. And yes, you can take that to the bank. And yes, you can file whatever Section 238 of the Criminal Code because I called him a fucking white supremacist because that is exactly what Andrew Lawton is. And Andrew Lawton runs True North, absolutely runs True North. And he bought it two years ago with the help of some losers from the conservative party. They're like, we need you to put out a whole bunch of bullshit all the time for us to kind of keep the temperature up. And we need you to fucking write a whole bunch of fake shit. You remember last week we were talking mm -hmm. about Rupa Subramania? You remember that girl yeah. who wrote the fucking yeah. bullshit piece about the Trudeau government didn't consult doctors when they came up with these mandates, which was a total yeah. fucking lie. It was like the bogeying of little pieces of information from a 7,000 word document, which I have unfortunately had to read. And none of what she said was accurate. And no. so they do this all the time. It's the disinformation fucking flywheel, right? Yeah. Where if you put out some stuff that isn't true, like Justin Trudeau hangs out with pedophiles or Justin Trudeau hangs her out with terrorists, you have a way of entering the whataboutism phase of whatever it is you're trying to do in terms of propaganda. And this is the woman who wants to be the first lady of Canada. She's a <laughs> fucking moron, like an absolute fucking idiot. And on top of it, this picture is not even of the person that she's talking about. The picture was soundly debunked. In fact, everything in that bullshit article, which Andrew Lawton commissioned or wrote for Pierre Polyev in response to him taking it in the mouth over the past four days, for meeting with an extremist and shaking his hand and not denouncing extremism, not denouncing white supremacy. That was the response. And it legitimately came from his beard, his Stepford wife. It came from her and her account. She's like, okay, send me something so that I can get out there and I can help you, honey. He's like, here, send this out. Cause he fucking retweets the same bullshit all the time. It is literally one of the centerpieces of the flywheel of disinformation between yeah. post-millennial True North News and Rebel News, those three organizations are 100% funded by some of the worst fucking jack offs you could possibly imagine. And they do it for the express purpose and express intent of making you angry, making this country worse, making you think something is going on and it isn't. It's and if strategy. it weren't for them, mm -hmm. Pierre wouldn't be able to tweet anything ever at all because they give him all the ammunition and all of it is based on a fucking lie and i hate justin trudeau i can't wait for the day where someone else is the prime minister and he isn't i mm -hmm. don't care who it is as long as it's not someone 
from the conservative extremist theocratic party of Canada because those fucking losers, those pieces of shit fucking hate this country. And his wife, the guy's wife, who wants to be the prime minister's wife, is out there wheeling bullshit because she's so weak minded and she's such a Stepford mom, such a Stepford wife that she'll do anything because they know they can't win on merit. They have to cheat. That's what happened today. And I fucking died laughing when I saw it. I don't know if it's bullshit. Cheats the right word. I think I think there is definitely a strategy in play um, and it is based 100 percent on it's how Trump won in the United States. Right? right. There was never a promise of anything. All he did was fuel um, the already rather extreme anger down in the United States. And and by doing so, you made the the the, the people in the middle so mad they wouldn't vote. And then you made the the right side. The, the Republican side and the conservative side in Canada so angry and they ran to vote to get out. And, 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 and again, like if you go, I'm, I'm not making this up. I'm not, I'm not trying to um, look smarter than I am. Send me something that PP has promised to do something constructive, anything positive, even, even a positive comment about this country, where we're at, you will not see it. You won't see it in any of his press releases. You won't hear him say it in any of his town halls. It's all, you've lost your freedoms. Justin Trudeau's a dick. The only way to fix this country, and there's never a solution, is to is to, is to vote for me. And it's working. It's working because we're all so angry right now, right across the board, that... Um, no one's hearing what what what's coming out of his mouth, right? No, we're not even yep. self aware enough to realize when we're being overly negative, and a lot in a lot of cases. And and if you're not even self aware enough, how are you going to be aware of a strategy of a politician that has you whooped up? No, you're just going to buy the fucking sticker on your way out of town hall and slap it on the back of the truck, yeah. right? Well, it, and what this my guy, yeah. Go ahead, and bro. what this does is it lends to your what you always say, Locke is. People don't vote people in, people vote people out, and they know that. Yeah. So the only way to get to somebody to vote somebody out is to talk shit. And what about why... ism? Sorry, yeah, go, go ahead. ahead. Go. No, go ahead. Go ahead, uh, What about ism is the the fastest highway to an admission of guilt of what, what you've been accused of. And that's what that's what but nobody on that side that does the voting sees it that way. They're just like, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, what about that? What about that, huh? But they don't like well, our guy did it too, but whatever. We're we're looking at you. So you're absolutely right. And it and it causes people, it causes people to get angry. It causes people to get emotional. They eat Oreos and pepperonis because they don't know what to do with themselves. <laughs> and this is now where we are. <laughs> well, and the funny, the, <laughs> the funny thing Taking about the funny thing about on your body. <laughs> yeah. The the funny thing about where we're at right now, too, I think that that a lot of people aren't aware of is Buckley's and um, Mr. Christie. Yeah, it, the, the body's you know, what's going to you know, what's going to end up happening is is at at the end of it. And this happens every time the guy gets in the guy that everyone said shouldn't get in that got in and everyone goes, what? Hold on. How did fucking Trump get in? And then you go, oh, oh, and then it's and, and when you're at that oh, oh stage, it's too late. That's what I'm worried about. Uh, I'm not worried about Justin Trudeau not winning because I think we do need a change. I'm worried about that moment where everyone goes, "Uh Oh, okay. Yes. We had some problems with Justin. He is a wildly weak leader. You mean Um, like Trump in the States in 2016 where everybody's like, what the fuck did we do? Well, like and that kind of thing. I think we're so... smarter than than the state. So, like, I think we're a uh... smarter group of people. Like, I was thinking about it yesterday because you were like super bullish on the fact that hey, he's probably going to win. He's probably going to be the next prime minister. I'm like, you know what? Like, peddling that hate to a very small group of fucking legitimate idiots is super successful, right? And yeah. it's exactly what he's doing: peddling hate, fear mongering, no mm-hmm. policies, no improvements, no no nothing, zero. It's just like. Ooh, I'm, I'm going to get rid of the gatekeepers from this thing. I'm going to get rid of that gatekeeper, and we're going to yeah. fucking murder that gatekeeper. Gatekeepers ever murdered. Oh, by the way, we're just going to give you a bunch of free stuff. Oh, by the way, you're going to be free. Oh, by the way, I'm a fucking idiot. Like, that's everything that comes out of this fucking guy's mouth. 
And so uh, when you when you have to go and stump, when you have to go and talk to people who are clearly smarter than the people he's targeting and who are more self-aware than anybody he's trying to get to vote for him at the moment, just so he can be the fucking leader of the conservative party, any of those people, when you open it up to, I don't know, 30 million people that have the ability to reason, pretty much everybody's going to go, fuck that guy. We watched him for the past year literally try and tear this country apart, treat people like shit. Do you remember Rachel uh, Gilmore from Global? Remember her? This young lady. She's a uh, reporter for Global News, and she was trying to fight uh, you know, the, all the threats that she was getting from Jeremy yep. McKenzie and all his people. She got threatened to the point yesterday where uh, she basically, her entire family got threatened. Someone with guns, she alleged. And it's to the point where the stochastic terror that a guy like Pierre and people in this party this and inflaming. his wife, his wife doing this, just fanning his it. wife is partaking. The conservative party is nothing more than a sco- stochastic terror organization at this point. Uh, we're seeing it on both sides. To though. Fucking rile we're seeing it on up. both sides. Yeah, but not yeah. the not in this kind of violent manner. Now, yeah, I, other, I get that. And I don't want to get to both sides yet. We can in just a second. But my, my point is this, is that you have to call it like you see it. And if you can't, it means you have a bias. And if you don't, if you do have a bias, your opinion here is worth nothing because all yep. you're trying to do is get people to understand and vote for your culture. This isn't a culture thing anymore. Like when you're talking about the other side, they're terrible at this. The right is unbelievably good at it because they don't have any morals. They've got nothing to lose. They know they yeah. can't win based on merit. And so it's like, how do we fucking trigger as many people as we can? How do we stay at the top of the fucking news cycle? <laughs> and when things yep. get really desperate or dangerous for them, they tickle fucking negative. pull out all the tickle. fucking weirdo stops, which tick, is what we're tick. seeing here. Yeah, yeah I'll give you an example. Emotions. Yep. I'll give Go you ahead. an example in Alberta um, of of the, the left. You heard about the Danielle Smith UCP worker calls, like, like the, the campaign calls. Yeah. yeah. And I got like one and then I got another one and then I got the same one and then I got another one da, 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 and they, I got like six or seven of them. And the first time I listened to it, I was like, Ooh, she's got a bad apple in her campaign office. Hopefully she'll be able to get rid of that, that one there. Cause that's not how you handle, um, you know, a, a campaign call. Um, and, and then I got another one. And I was like, oh, this, no, there's no way that this, this is happening. And so there was two or three that were floating around. And um, I even I even played them for um, Grant in the morning earlier in the week. And I'm like, these can't be real. And he's like, yeah, they sound fake. And listen, I'm not a, I'm not a UCP fan. I'm not a Danielle Smith fan. I'm not motivated politically in that arena at all. But there are examples of this from both sides and and you know what this could have been somebody not even politically connected that did it but it still happens on both sides of the fence and they was it, were those, you're talking about those robocalls fake. that uh where where someone was calling on behalf of this woman named danielle smith who's running for the premiership in uh, in in alberta and she's hard right she's full into the oh, fucking yeah. conspiracy shit she's using theo flurry and Jamie Sallet and some of her talking points. She's conducting town halls with literally the craziest fucking people on the planet. She's the same person like four years She's ago. She's 2030. Like, secondhand smoke isn't that bad for you. Neither is like if you smoke only 10 cigarettes a day, you're going to be fine because she was like stumping on behalf of big cigarette. I'm like, oh, fuck, she's an idiot. But what, what, what's been going around are these voicemails where w- one of her alleged campaign workers is calling uh are yeah. calling like different people <laughs> saying you can't come to our rally because you're a fucking commie you can't come to no, our rally because you're they were more polite than that so it, it uh, you know little, what i mean it's kind of threw you like i'm so yeah. it was like it was like a return call and a message because it was and um, it's not real is that what you're saying that no those they're were fake like it's, a ro- it's a robocall yeah. yeah no they weren't real they weren't real they were made up they were fake they never came from Danielle Smith's office at all. Somebody created them and released it like it was coming from the UCP. So it was a prank. Disinformation. You call it whatever you want. 
It was the left's <laughs> attempt at discrediting the right. Yeah. All I'm saying is it doesn't the right the does it one good. way, the left does it another way. They're all fucking assholes, and they all need to be hauled out for when they do bad shit. It That's doesn't, all it I'm doesn't, saying. It doesn't do them any favors for for doing it if it was like on behalf of like the left, because it literally it all it does is it makes it look like oh look we're being attacked again, and it feeds into that victim class that the right that that they 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 thrive on and they survive with. So I'm I'm thinking it's a prank or. It's even them saying it's self sabotage. Like, look, look. It he wasn't hit me. set up he hit to me. go. Hey, he I got me. a funny one for you here, kids. No, it was set up. I can't believe I got this call from Danielle yeah. Smith's office. Yeah, yeah. So that's not a prank. That's an attempt to damage this woman's reputation, regardless well, of whether you agree with her or not. And, and to be it fair, was she released need like any it help was. No, she doesn't. She no. does it on her own. Yeah. Is she not? Is she not vying crazy. for leadership? She's leadership. She's leadership looking for leadership. So, yeah. Yeah. how do you, yeah? How do you know it's not one of her? One of the people that are in her lead? It'd be like Sheree doing it. To I'm not going to do this. I'm not. I'm not. Linz, if you don't oh, believe but it, Stone Sea Witch is James D. Fiore. We'll we'll hit a, that <laughs> con conspiracy I theory, but we up. can't entertain mine. Okay. I like I yours too. Lines. As an alternative <laughs> talking point. Yeah, I know. Two. PP's wife sending out this True North article, right? Mm -hmm. We can shit on her, right? yeah. But when anybody else that like, I'm sure Justin has his little Say she, strategy. Well, do you do you remember too? Names, names. We'll leave names out of it. <clears throat> but case in point, to Lachlan's point, and he's not wrong, is that there are some crazies on the left that are like, let's make something up and hang it on them. Let's do that. Oh, yes, because they do it. The, the, the anti-Semitic like, shit at the convoy. The Tupac stuff. Yeah. 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 Bernie Farber from the anti hate yeah. network. Like that kind of stuff. Like there, there's lots yeah. of people that do it to the point where the Tupac people, the people that hate that weirdo fake convoy church in, in Ottawa are doing that to them. They're swatting them. And to the point where it's like, yeah, I guess. I mean, fuck, if uh, this, you're going to, I would never do it. I, I find it funny. And I kind of find it funny when people do it from the right to the left and the left to the right. It's like, it's like playing fucking football over top of a house, like going, yeah. no, fucking send one that way. And the other guy's like, oh, yeah, what about this one? And you know what? It's such a fucking childish enterprise, and it's so fucking stupid that I, mm -hmm. I laugh every time it happens. And when I heard the Daniel Smith voicemail, I'm like, I, I, I tweeted to the woman who put it out. I'm like, is this real? She's like, 100% <laughs> real. And I'm like, hmm, interesting. And I didn't do anything with it after because I'm like, I'm not taking part in that. I'm not fucking yeah. helping any of those people either. And there's no oh. way that I can assure myself as to whether or not it's real. And we have people that get that stuff and literally send it to us hour after hour. Oh my God. What, what do you yeah. talk about this? Yeah. Talk about this. And I'm like, yeah. no, my fuck, DMs I'm not doing loaded. that. Because, right. Yeah. Like it's like yeah. every fucking day. And we take great pride in making sure that we don't do it, but we'll take it and call it out on both sides. If and ever it happens on the left and there's a great example, I'm happy to show it up. But what For I'm sure. saying is, it happens far more on that side than it does on that side. And it's fucking funny to me. It just it just is like like the idea that Andrew Lawton is the representative of a real news outlet after reading about this guy. Look at him. This is him. This is an article from the CBC four years ago. Let me read it to you. Ontario Peter PC Griffin. candidate Andrew Lawton blames mental illness for controversial tweets. Uh, look at him. He looks like he he fucking his blood type is mayonnaise um, on he top of Oreo him and apparently pepperoni. blaming mental illness for everything. These are just a smattering of his tweets. This is the guy who Pierre Polyev's wife retweeted today. He lies every day for dark money. It's what he does. He's a fucking douchebag. This is just a couple of his tweets. I'm covered in wires from a portable heart monitor. The Muslim gents nearby seem to think I'm one of them. Anti-immigrant. A Muslim and a communist walk into a bar. The bartender so says, hello, funny. Mr. President. That's clever. Uh, and then he's like, dancing with the mullahs. He like in the show called Dancing with the Mullahs. Whoever does the best dance is gay and is shot immediately. Next. That's Andrew Lawton for you. This is another one. Until I see an HIV case contracted through secondhand anal sex. Uh, the official internet code for gay sex is enter, colon, pound, pound, pound. Then he says, sound it out. Then he says, I left the Anglican church when they made a decision to allow gay marriage. That's that's the guy who P 
Pierre Polyev's wife gleefully retweeted his bullshit post. That is absolute bullshit about how much of a douchebag uh, Justin Trudeau is. And he kind of is a douchebag. But all the terrorists he hangs out with, all the pedophiles he hangs out with. And it was legitimately in response to her husband shaking hands with Jeremy McKenzie. Like these guys, it's all about the network, bro. It's all about the network. And they're all into the same shit. And it fucking now it's like, I'm not even angry about it. I just think it's fucking hilarious. Like, oh, my God, this is like what I used to do in grade 12. It's like this. Is the, the uh, It's like swatting someone on Twitter. It's the it's the cheesiest. And it's a fucking political Dude. strategy for the conservatives. And he's such a pussy. He made his wife put it out. Yeah, that's the, <laughs> the best one, part. The one thing such a pussy. The one thing that I the one thing that I find interesting about PP is is uh, I don't think he's dumb. Um, and I think he's going to ride because I think he witnessed a couple of things in the last few years that made him realize that he needed to um, stick to this strategy. And and I I I mean, we've all agreed that we're pretty certain he's going to win the, the conservative leadership, even though mm -hmm. probably Sheree would be a way better choice. But it looks like he's sort of on his way to winning that. Um, and he probably has enough back right now from like the like the the people that that pull the strings with the conservative party because i think they think he, that they need somebody that has a strong voice the right to take down justin trudeau i i i think that's still something that they believe needs to happen you're right and they saw they saw aaron o'toole and, and they realized about, we need the opposite yeah, flip. Yeah, flip flopping is that if they were trying to pull when they when they pull middle, all it did was just completely confuse the base. So they got a guy that can live there, whether he believes it or not, and that's that, that's a question. Um, and I I were like, on the liberal side of things, the, the in, in the world that we live in, if Justin Doe was caught being friendly with an extremist not go well for him all whereas pp with no one cares that he shook hands with mckenzie even register with, with the with that base he's not losing no. a ground at all um and so it, it'll it'll be very interesting to see how this whole thing moves forward right with, yeah, with him I'm, I'm continuing on this path yeah. like he is not yep. given up on this strategy every week we're talking about him doing something where we're going can, what he went he shook hands with jenzy like there's no way that anybody you mean a five minute just breakfast video? camp or any liberal yeah there's no way they would let him anywhere near somebody like that the photo op it just wouldn't happen in a minute and he just doesn't seem to care that's what concerns yeah. me more guys i keep trying to tell you i don't want this to happen i'm predicting it to happen and it's stuff like this that makes me wonder man we just we're we we don't have our finger on the pulse of what's happening in this country if that can happen and the and Every news outlet in the country isn't all over this. And he slips through. He dodges another bullet. Every time it happens, I'm just like, holy shit, man. Yeah, we're, but dude, he's in only a bad place right now. Well, he is. We are, but we're not. Like, he's only really focusing that attention on the idiots, right? Like, he really yeah. wants the idiot vote. And so he's focusing his attention on the idiots. And the idiots are like, yeah, that sounds good. But, but I mean, not one policy, not else? one solution. But we're angry like you are. And thanks for telling us you're angry. We'll follow the angry guy. And everybody else yeah. is sitting here going, okay, when we get to a federal election, we'll see what happens. Because you're going to have to take everything he said, and which has been not just divisive. He's attacking people. He's attacking female reporters. He's attacking mainstream media outlets who he's going to need. He's attacking Canadians who are woke. He's attacking liberals like fucking the majority of this country Trump playbook. in a pinch. Yeah. Would not would vote liberal dependent. It wouldn't matter who the fucking guy was. Same reason why the conservative assholes and the idiots are like, it doesn't matter who it is as long as it's not just Trudeau. 
like you're you're forgetting about this whole other section of of the of the country which is like we're just going to wait and see because if he's like I this you're right. which he can't walk all this back like sending his wife out to fight his battles for him telling people who are woke that he's going to end wokeism i actually looked up what woke meant today you guys want to go through this with me yeah he's going to end this <laughs> yeah cuz this is really this is really interesting actually yeah, I find it interesting. Uh, I saw Pierre it too. said he gave a, a speech in French the other day. I don't speak it, so I didn't understand it. However, translated, he basically said he's going to make it illegal to be woke. He's going to go after people who are woke. And oh all the crazies God. in there he's are like, suck les bleus. Let's go get the woke. Let's do it. And I looked up woke in the dictionary because I'm like, I'm like, here's the deal. I need to find out what this word means in its essence. To be able to understand what he's deciding to end in this country, right? Rally against, yeah. And like most things, language culturally, we like to take it and weaponize it, whether it's woke, whether it's left, whether it's right, whether it's conservative, whether yeah, it's we bastardize I mean, depending it. on who you want to fucking go after, just use those words, which are just innocuous words. Yeah. But woke, let's look at it. This is from the Webster's Dictionary. Woke is an adjective. It means to... <laughs> That you're aware of and actively attentive to important facts and issues, especially issues of racial and social justice. Pierre wants to end wokeism in this country. He wants to end the awareness and active attentive uh, attention to important facts and issues. He wants to prevent people from trying to make the world a better place by being more racially and socially aware. That's what he's doing. That is fucking hilarious to me. Like, not a, not a week ago, he's like, fuck the wokes. We're going to end the yep. woke shit. And I'm like, I, I stay away from all of the, the colloquial language. Like, I stay away from conservative, liberal. I stay away from all those things for Buzz this words. very reason. I don't talk mm -hmm. about being woke because when someone's like, I'm woke, I'm like, fuck, good for you. Are you a good person? Do you advocate for human beings? Do you advocate for marginalized yeah. people? Because that, to me, is like a, an alpha male. That's a normal human being. But what Pierre is saying is that, no, 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 no. I'm going to end wokeism across this country. According to Webster's, being woke, the very definition, means you are uh, aware and actively attentive to important facts and issues, especially issues of racial and social justice. That's why he shook hands with old Jer. That's why he doesn't denounce white supremacy. That's why he doesn't uh, uh, denounce extremism and white nationalism and Christian nationalism is yep. because all of those things do not contribute to racial and social equality. They're all about. And no, what no, he'll no, do is he'll say he's, a, he's, he's listening to everybody in Bingo. the country. Bingo. And he's not. Not listening to anybody. He's it's actually not listening to the fucking... majority at all. Bingo. Yeah. yeah. All he's doing is jacking people up and then going, hey, guys, nudge, nudge, wink, wink. We're going to get rid of wokeism. So when you translate that, if that's the Anglo-Saxon language that that fucking weasel uses, when you translate it, according to the Anglo-Saxon Webster's Dictionary, <laughs> it means he's going to fight against issues of racial and social justice. How does that make you feel? Pierre if Polyev you asked, fans. if you wandered around the streets of Ontario, not even Alberta, and you asked people to give the definition of woke, you're not getting that. So they're, they're it has been weaponized. It, no, it's been bastardized. There's, you're right. there's a, yeah. <laughs> it, it has. It, it has. It's been bastardized, and it and it has been. It it has. There's a negative connotation to being woke now. If if yeah. somebody says, "Oh, you're woke." They're probably not giving you a compliment. But what do they think? If what do they you think they're saying? You're woke. What do you think they're saying? I think they're saying. Yeah, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think the pejorative is? They're calling is? you a pussy. Yeah. I think but, they're calling you a pussy. But for why? Uh, That's why because you asked you're not. Why? Because you, because you're nice to people. Because you do what's in the best interest of people around you. Like you know, get vaccinated. That kind of stuff. You might wear a mask in a store just to be kind. You might say thank you to someone. People for don't think of that. For people you. think of like that person that. in the office that they have to be careful about how they speak around. Which we, that's okay. That's 
that's you, how you mean, people you, view. You, you mean being self aware? You mean being self aware of, of of the environment? Or responsible. Of, of the I'm that telling. You say? I'm telling you right now. <laughs> yeah. Most you people. -aware. You talk about the majority. You talk about the majority. I'm telling you right now. Yeah. When he says he's getting rid of wokeism, the majority of the people are yeah. gonna think, "Oh, he wants to end." He wants to get rid of that annoying guy at work that reports you to HR. But so why is he annoying? Actually. Yeah, but that's and that, but nobody ever digs deeper. Why is that guy annoying that reports you to HR? Yeah. Why? Because he's, he's, woke prob dick. he's probably a minority, or he's probably gay, or he's probably yeah. uh, fits into something Sensitive. that uh, a, a social a social justice it's, uh, box that it's it the same thing with some. We had somebody some point kindness? out on the on the yeah. comments section earlier. Pedophile now is the term that they use to degrade somebody that they don't agree with on the right. Oh, Dean, yeah, because I don't agree. Dean yeah. must be a pedophile. 25 yeah. years ago, Dean would have been a homosexual. We've switched it around. Now, yeah. you can't, because they're looking for a new way of positioning or to, of insulting somebody, now they use woke. Oh, you must no. be a woke dick yeah yeah no wonder i don't like working here there's too many of you here you like, must be that's, socially that's what... and racially aware fuck you yeah they don't even know what to say. i'm that's not allowed not to say the n-word here it, fuck this place yeah <laughs> fuck you guys what do you say i can't make fun of a handicapped kid but today in public fuck you i can't fuck call you. that brown guy the p-word i'm yeah well, you guys are woke fucking i can't pussies. say the n-word uh, while i'm in a park in front of people playing basketball, I can't just scream the N-word. Fuck you guys. It was just Honestly, a joke. I'm I got a friend I... that's black. <laughs> I honestly think that that's how people view wokeism now. It is It is not yeah. It's not a and positive the, well, thing. It's because, it, it's, 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 because a they, it's because certain people in society are like, just call them. Because that's why I go back to this. It's like the only thing they think is like, well, let's label them as pussies. People that want the world to be a better place. Progressives. Let's label progressives as pussies. What do we want to do? We want to take that word. We want to turn it around. We want to beat the shit out of them with it. And it's legitimately a strategy from the theocratic right. It's like, no, yep. fuck, we don't want people. And what they're legitimately telling you, and if you read the tea leaves, or if you look at the dictionary yeah. version of woke, <laughs> what they're saying is, we want to still be racist pricks. Like, we can't, like, we, we can't change you're never going to change us, so just fucking leave us alone. And I Pierre not only Carl. is courting that, he's preventing people from actually moving forward with their lives by kettling and putting all the same idiots in the same cage and go, we're going to fight this shit. We're going to fight racially sensitive people. We're going to fight socially sensitive people. We're going to fuck them over. That's what he's legitimately saying. But yeah, all the people are hearing is, yeah, we're going to get rid of Terry in the office. Fuck him. Sweet, He's too sensitive. <laughs> like Carl in the sharp gold. Oh, when I say the N word again, yes, yeah, yeah. Thanks, yeah, Pierre. I want to be able. I want to be able to do the, you know, the Jew, the Chinese guy, and the priest joke at work. And now I can do that again. If P they literally, That's these people that support him are so fucking dumb. They think that if he gets in, that he'll be be able to just launch racially offensive jokes at work for life. <laughs> like that's how these guys feel. They're like, yeah, I don't think it's. Culture. I mean, you guys, you guys. No, are really, no, that's how you're a lot really of these guys boiling think. it down. You're really boiling it down. I, I think there is a the there's a segment the of the population. Man. There's mm -hmm. there's a, there's a segment of the minute. population that is is um, very upset about having to watch their tongue, um, having to um, and 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 it's not Take listen. It's not about the yeah. n word. It's not. It's about uh, there are listen. There are overly sensitive people in the world that we live in now. If you guys can't recognize that, then you need to get out more. There are. Oh, absolutely. No, and I told you. I totally that's agree. That's what he's referring to, and that's what people the, will hear when saying. they, when, when they, when he hears, "I'm getting rid of wokeness." Yeah. That's what they're hearing, and and you know what? Listen, you guys have boiled this down to the definition of wokeism. I understand what you're doing. I'm telling you right now that the general public, yeah, the general guy, whether general. he lives in Ontario or Just is going to enjoy that, is Just going idiot. to like exactly what he's saying yeah. because they got they in trouble look, because they, they the called dictionary. somebody a pussy at work.
Yeah. And they got in shit mm-hmm. for it. And mm-hmm. and they got hauled you, you, into an office and they got but, sat down. And Sarah, the head of HR, said, Larry, you you can't make jokes like that anymore. We you have to you have to be very careful. Now listen, I am I have a I have a very aggressive personality. Is I'm Lachlan. difficult to work with. <laughs> I've admitted that. And and listen, okay, I understand Barry. what you're saying. Okay, and I Larry. know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. And I know what you mean. And I know I understand where you guys are coming from on making fun of PP for it. It only but, took us an hour to get the story out of him about HR. No, 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 no. Hold on. <laughs> hold on. Listen. You're Larry, aren't you, bud? <laughs> no, it has nothing to do with that. I literally, I get out of work so fast now. In the last couple of years, I've realized through COVID and through the pandemic that I can work from home. Mm-hmm. I get out of that office immediately because there is a strong potential that just me being in that building, I avoid workout out. I, I, I avoid work functions. I don't socialize. I, I chosen very few people to socialize with at work. It is all in an effort to hang on to my job because <laughs> that this, and you guys think this is funny. I work with a bunch of millennials and I don't know anymore what's offensive and what upsets people. Any you cannot be yourself. And I'm not alone in that. I know that, and this isn't, and I, you guys know how offensive I can be from one moment to the next, No, but, and I'm never (laughs) going to get in serious trouble in any situation outside of my work environment, the way I conduct myself, but I am actually worried about offending people just by being myself at work. I had a t-shirt on and I got a complaint to HR. About mm-hmm. the T-shirt that I had on, I think I remember that one. Yeah, and and again, we've lost a bit of a sense of humor. We have, and um, and again, the rules are shifting all the time. And and again, this isn't just about being old. You know, I'm 52. I admit it. Maybe well, what I went through is different than what they went through. We live in a world where people get upset about things very easily now. Yeah, and so. I know. Like it, it, it's just it's the world we live in. And you know what? That I'm getting rid of wokeness is gonna fucking work for PP. It's gonna work really, really well. Until someone like us goes, Hey, let's look at the definition of the word. And if this is what he's all about, maybe you should rethink this fucking racist who hates social equality. Like, maybe. And I'm going to hang that on him. And we should. Everybody should. I but don't think you point, should. I think you oh, should. Oh, oh totally. I, I totally to think point, you should. I don't disagree with mm, seven out of ten things you just said. Um, because I'm the same way. Like, a joke's a joke. Take a joke. And if you choose, which I tr- truly do believe, according to evolutionary psychology and every psychotherapist and every book on choosing to be offended... People mm-hmm. have chosen to be offended yeah, because it gives yeah. them yeah. this public bump. The power. Gives them this like, look at me. I'm so fucking with it. That's, I believe, what you're talking about. Yeah. And those people yeah. can kick rocks too. Those people are the fucking worst of the worst. And yeah. I've gotten fucking There's all kinds of, of hate mail from them. Oh, totally. There's garbage. A lot of like, them. like you, you, you're not allowed to enjoy anything. You're not allowed to laugh at that. I can't believe you said that. I can't believe you. I can't believe mm-hmm. that's on your shirt. I'm so tired of swears on t-shirts. And I'm like, hold it. Mm-hmm. Hang on a second. This has nothing to do with you. So you don't have to choose <laughs> to be offended today. Yeah. If yeah. Pierre Polyev said, you know what? We're going to fucking insert some common sense into uh, how this whole fucking thing works, which he can't because it's social media and there's no way he's going to prevent people from calling each other names. It's just never going to happen. But Mm -hmm. if that was what he was talking about, I think generally speaking, people would go, "Hmm." but he's not. He's not. He's talking about the whiteies. He's talking about honkies. He's talking about making this world a little more Christian, and a little more white and more favorable. He's literally talking about protecting the privilege of the white man. That's what he's talking about when he says, I'm going to end wokeism in Canada. And when you look at the actual definition of woke, once again, let's go back to it. If that's something he's ending, 
He's ending awareness when it comes to issues of racial and social justice. So if that's what he's talking about and and he's not saying what you're you and I say he should be saying, that means he means that. That means it's a dog whistle. That means it's one of those little fucking hidden things sure that guys say to people because it's like, you know what? You hate being told what to think and say. Everybody hates being told what to think and say. Everybody. Yeah. But mm-hmm. people who don't have the best interest of the environment around them as the number one thing that they get to contribute to, those are the people that are going to vote for Pierre. Those are the people that didn't get vaccinated. And those are the people that fucking look at that, uh, that asshole like he's manna from heaven. This guy's going to save us. They literally, most of those people believe if he gets in, yeah. they can go around, call people the N-word if they like. That's literally what, which is why you get so many old people going to his rallies. I don't so think, many I don't white, think, crazy I don't think Christians it. going to his rallies. I think like, that's too far. Yeah, we want to be able to tell people it's to fuck it off and eat shit. That's what we want to do. I don't think I don't think people think that I, I, I you, you know what a very 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 small percentage of the population might think yeah I can bring back the n word if PP gets in but that's not what most people think I think I'm most people enjoy vamping I think that, that what he's trying to what, what he's actually saying uh, yeah again I I and, and, and you guys put me in this position where it feels like I'm defending PP <laughs> I fucking hate both of you hey what are you guys doing on October twenty second anybody. <laughs> Yeah, Anybody? Larry. Well, he's not actually. He's 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 he makes great sense, and he's and I t- identify with what you're saying. But you often like to grease the wheels of both sides, which you know what will happen. You'll get run over if you're in the middle, dude. Oh, get, dude, get listen. Run. There's tire tracks on me every day. What are you guys doing on uh, October twenty second? Anybody? Here, oh, I don't okay. know what what am I doing? Busy? You on October twenty second? No, you guys busy? Uh, no, I'm actually. Real quick? No, no I'm, I'm. Do you want I'm, me to physically look at my calendar? No. No, just probably not doing much today, October 22nd evening. Is it a Saturday? I don't know, but I know what I'm doing. Hold on, let me check my calendar. I am booking a ticket to Calgary, Alberta, Canada for the 20th, and I'm coming out there for an event on the 22nd. Oh, yeah, I've already been doing Saturday. Ladies and gentlemen, and I would like you to join us for $50. That's my naked day. That's. I'm sorry. You'll fit right in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Most of these people are wearing the emperor's clothes too. Um, I want you to come with me to Fire and Ice, an evening with Theo Fleury, Jamie Salay, and convoy organizer who's currently wearing an ankle monitor, Chris Barber. This looks gas like a fucking blast. It's only fifty dollars. Let me read you about the event. This is literally happening. This gets sent to us yesterday. Locke sent it to us, too. And he's like, is this fucking for real? I'm like, oh, it's very real. I'm writing about (laughs) it right now. You can go read about it at DeanBlundell.com. This is really the the breakdown, though. (laughs) Join gold medalist and Stanley Cup champion Theo Fleury and gold medalist figure skater Jamie Saleh in their live show. Chris Barber is a well-known trucker from Saskatchewan who has a history of standing up for the rights of Canadians. Unless, of course... You weren't involved in the convoy. Then he fucking hates you and and delivered 8,000 of the biggest losers to Ottawa in one day for three solid weeks. And he's also a support charge. Thank you, Linda. Yeah. We dig deeper into his past to understand his character and to hear the version of his story that is yet to be told in mainstream news. (laughs) Joining the panel will also be Joseph Borgo, who had his first experience with Chris and his love for Canadians in our country. Tickets include access to the Cardell Theater, along with a VIP meet and greet with Theo Fleury, Jimmy Chalet, Joseph Borgo, Chris Barber. Appetizers will be available an hour before the show, guys. <laughs> uh, uh, an yeah, hour before the show. Sardines. Um, Pepperoni and, and uh, Oreos. Oreos. Bad news. Bad news, though. There are no refunds. There's Chris. There's Theo. There's Joseph Borgo. Now, you might remember Chris Barber as the lead organizer for the convoy. He was the first guy arrested. Him and his wife. The very first guy. He's wearing an ankle monitor. He's not supposed to have any contact with these people or do any of this shit. So there you go. You got that. That's October 22nd. It's like a -A make-a-wish photo. I'm going. That guy on the left is Joseph Borgo. He's a member of the Plymouth Brethren Church, and he's one of their bad actors, good actors, depending on what side of the equation you're on. 
And I believe he is to some extent funding uh, Theo, funding the Cardell Theater. Uh, the Cardell Theater is part of a building that uh, all of these degenerates have taken over so that they can uh, pump out as much bullshit as possible on a daily basis. But on October 22nd, nothing will prevent me from going to listen to <laughs> what two of the dumbest Canadians in the history of this country have to say to a man who has a difficult time formulating more than one sentence. Well, this fly is a two-hour event. In, fly out to Edmonton. We'll drive bucks, down. 50 bucks, and it's non-refundable if you can't go, just to let you know. Wow. But I am absolutely going to this oh, yeah. because the content that will come out of listening to three legitimate village idiots who think Jesus is more important than science, who don't believe in <laughs> fucking uh epidemiology they don't believe in infectious disease they believe that jesus trumps all i'm fucking dying to go and watch this and you I, should all go too i and wonder if they would let Edmonton. you in they I would, wonder if they would they, let you have to have to bought, bought a ticket it's freedom non-refundable i can go wherever i want that's an open event i am legitimately booking a ticket Jamie, I know you're watching this. You watch this all the time. She hates yeah. me, but she won't. She won't, Hi, she Jamie. won't not follow me, by the way. Hi, Jamie. She has a, she, she won't not block me. She blocks everybody, but she doesn't block me. <laughs> um, but Jamie, if you're listening, and I'm talking directly to you, Jamie, I am coming to see you on October the 22nd because you are such a riveting public speaker that I can't miss this. And Theo Fleury, whose brain is probably operating at a third grade level at this point of his life, there is nothing that can prevent me from seeing that disaster <laughs> show. Nothing. So count me in. Look forward to seeing you. Everybody go get your tickets. Chris Barber, Jamie Saleh, Chris. And by the way, Jamie is being dragged about this. And I didn't even know this, but did you guys know that she is a life coach as well? You guys, I'm sorry. Is she coach? Like, <laughs> what, what does that mean? I, whenever I hear that, I'm like, like what? She's a life Can I get coach. paid for that? You can pay her. You can pay Jamie to life coach you. You can pay like literally <laughs> the most pea-brained, mushy moron on the planet, can James I say LA, this? to have be you your guys, life coach. Have you guys met this. Jamie? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Several oh. times. God. Look at this. She wants you to start dreaming. I want to meet and discuss and motive what motivates you. Fill in your info below, and I will contact you to schedule our first chat. It's all you got to do. That's all you do. And Jamie, she doesn't just do that. She's a former gold gold medal champion. I yeah. know what she says. I know what it takes to pursue your dreams as a motivational coach. I know <laughs> how to so, help my clients so sad. stay committed to achieve everything they want to achieve. And on her, this is from her personal website. So she needs to update it, obviously, because yeah, who's, her who's and that guy? are no longer together. Yeah, he's like, yes, he <laughs> yeah. he's like, he's like, I haven't seen her in like that two was, years. She went nuts. That was hard like, to watch. <laughs> And she's like, as you may know me as an Olympic gold medalist from figure skating in 2002. That's 20 years ago. I'm also a mother of two, wife, friend, motivational life coach, and advocate for people with special needs because she is one, right? Like that's. <laughs> you know what? I got to say this. I've met her a couple of times. Uh, she is such a sweetheart. So this sweet. was this was one of the more surprising things are. that came out of the pandemic. Right? One of the, like one of the craziest out. brain meltings was her, for sure. Yeah. Theo, I had pinned yeah. like years and ago. I'm like, that guy's so going to lose it. You had that pinned? Oh, yeah. I knew, dude, I've interviewed Theo a bunch of times. He's, and he's, he's always melting. real nice, but he was kind of vacant. Theo, and I'm like, Theo does not surprise demon. me. That the, no. the Jamie one is, is really shocking to me. Like, it, it, it is. It was, and you could see the, like, you can see the pain on Craig's face too, I, and that tweet. Remember that tweet? He goes, "This has been like very one of the most difficult years of my life after we married her." <laughs> I, we shouldn't laugh. This guy went through hell. He didn't know what he was getting himself you, into, and then probably you choose yeah. your own hell. Oh, yeah. Imagine you probably thought that. Oh, yeah, he chose man. that when he started hitting it at Battle of the Blades. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, just gonna say he was still married. Yeah, it's it's, it's a tough one, right? He's still too. married. He gets he, Jamie comes in. She's a, she's bubbly. She's really bubbly and like really oh she's a like one sweetheart. of those people. Well, until you start talking about like science, life, or you know objective reality, and then she fucking yeah or empathy right, for your fellow right man, whatever. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. And so, Craig, yeah, I remember because uh, they came in at the same time. We had them on the show. It was doing Battle of the Blades. And I'm like, what's going on with you and Craig? You guys are awfully friendly. She goes, oh, yeah, we like each other. But, you know, it's a little complicated. I'm like, like he's married and got adult kids. Like, that's kind of complicated. <laughs> She's like, yeah, sort of. Yeah, I guess so. And then uh, as soon uh, as she, like, she went nuts as soon as the pandemic started, everybody was looking at Craig like this. Uh, like, are you? Uh, and so he puts out a tweet okay? just after Bell Let's Talk Day. And he's like, just so you know. I haven't seen her in a year. I haven't seen my, which right is very is. sad. I hadn't seen his kid. Yeah. And he's like, we haven't talked in some time and it's over. And, yeah. and she didn't talk about it. She's not talking about like how her melted brain has destroyed two families. The first one she tried to have with Dave. And then the second one she tried to have with some other guy's wife. And now she's like, fuck it. I, I just want to live for Jesus. It's all, like she's literally throwing away her life on earth. For the afterlife because she literally thinks that jesus is the reason for the season so she's jesus all in the vaccine and i'm gonna go see her on october 22nd vip yeah. meet and greet can you pay extra i, for I, I no I it's it's included in that in. i think they'll stop yeah. it, i think they'll prevent me from going in there too i do i think we well, think i'm gonna hey, you think i'm gonna eat an appetizer made by someone that doesn't believe in science not happening well, I mean, I'll be, that's the only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go and go, hey, listen, don't eat the appetizers. If these guys made them, probably didn't wash their hands. That's all I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, ticket includes but, access to the show along with a VIP meet and greet with Theo Fleury, oh, Jamie Sallet, and the, the other two. Isn't that great? I mean, but I also I'm think that they're probably going to have a problem with your Hail Satan shirt at the front door, too. <laughs> nope. I'm Maybe. wearing the fuck out of that thing. I'm only taking Hail Satan shirts when I go out to Alberta. I want everybody to see it. I'm going to walk through Chinook Mall. I'm going to go to West Edmonton. I might even fucking just go to church with this bad boy on somewhere in Alberta. I'm just going to walk in and go, hey, whatever happened to Jesus saying, uh, bring me your, your, your tired and bring me your sad. I'm tired and sad. I have a big Hail Satan shirt sign up. Let me in. And they'll be like, can't wear that shirt in here. I'm going to do the exact same thing to Jamie and Theo. That's why I came up with the Satan line. No word of a lie. I'm like, ah, nah, fuck them. I'm going to take my imaginary Satan and I'm going to rub it in their face and see how they like it. Which, by the way, they right. hate it. But we have sold several of them, so I'm excited. Yeah. <sighs> I'm going to get them to like coaching from put your head with a pentagram on the back of them. <laughs> if you think I'm not signing Lachlan up for that life coach stuff, oh, yeah. you're fucking crazy, just so you know. We should all sign up for it, to be yeah. honest with you. <laughs> Do me a favor. If do it, yeah. do it. But put my personal email address oh. in there because I want to see if she responds. Okay. She knows oh, I was me. Going to do that. Uh, uh, so it'll be. It, it might be. Uh, I, I, I'm. It might be one of those situations where she she just goes, "Oh, they're messing with me." But yeah. Anyway. No, we're not. I really want to. See, I really want to see her. I really want to see her yeah. and Theo on fire and ice night with fire and ice. <laughs> Jesus. Look at, hey, you look got at this. You got a, you got two washed up former athletes whose brains have been fried talking to a guy who spends 12 hours a day in his truck. Tell me that's not going to be fucking electric. Are you kidding me? Who's not going to oh, this? Yeah, it looks like this reminds me of the flat earth conference that we went to <laughs> where we put Jimmy in a globe <laughs> outfit and we went and it was so weird. Yeah. yeah. It was bizarre, and the, the and 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 I I didn't know when we went. I had no idea. We just heard flat Earth conference, and I'm like, let's get. We had somebody at work make a paper mache mm -hmm. uh, of the globe, and then we put Jimmy in that, and then he wandered in, and I was behind him, and we got some funny looks, man. Mm -hmm. And then we sat down in in the boardroom, and there's about forty of us in there. And tickets were expensive. Like it was like three hundred bucks or something like that. We did a we did a drive on the air to raise money to buy tickets because our our company <laughs> refused to buy them. So we did a GoFundMe. <laughs> um, so we got a couple of weekend passes, and um, it got really religious really really quick. Mm -hmm. And I had no idea that's what it was going to be. Um, but apparently, uh, like in the first testament or something, there's a, a line uh, in the in the Bible that talks about the earth being flat or something. So they're that's oh. what they're hanging their hat on. Yeah, they're idiots. Um, well, yeah. So this kind of reminds me. It 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 has this feel like 
to me. There yeah, was also dude, they're all the snake. snake. These we were, were asked to leave. Snakes. The, we were dude. asked to leave, and I'm like, "Why? We paid for our passes." And they went, "Wow, well, like you're shitting you got a little over. person. You got a little person in the globe." Of yes, because speak- <laughs> <laughs> you put a little person in a round globe. If it was a flat I'm globe, go get that. I'll go yeah. get it for you. I, I I got it. Do you I'll have do the wanna, costume? I, yeah, I have the before, costume. Yeah, he's gonna before go get we it. leave. I'm gonna they, go get it. Yeah, dude, he's like me. He and I are the I same guy. You you've it's, hooked into the right crowd here. The only I, thing I, I love more than being right is fucking with people who are perennially wrong. Like yeah. literally, is the only thing I love more than being right. Seriously, it is fun. I love those things it is, so it much. Is, it is fun. I, you know what though? Freud. Like when something bad happens to a total asshole, I'm like, oh well, fuck, let's watch this on repeat for hours. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's and that's oh, where it, I was going to say that that's what it is for me. It's the watching the of the of the crumble at the mm-hmm. end when the entire narrative just falls apart, or you get you get yours, and that's that's just my that's I I, I it moves I think in in my my shorts when that happens a little bit sometimes. I'm going to yeah. see if I can little. put it on. Oh, here we go. He's yes. wearing his Hang globe on. that he that he made a little person wear to a flat Earth conference. <laughs> This is the people Again, that PP wants I to cancel, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, he probably believes oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'd take my glasses and hat off. <laughs> I can't hear anything. <laughs> Just we went to the Flat Earth Conference in Edmonton to a couple years ago. Uh, good job on the paper. Uh, uh, that's a great round earth. Yeah. Oh, it great looks so earth. good. It's comfortable. Oh. <laughs> I might be stuck in this damn thing. He's going to have to get it off. <laughs> good thing he does yoga. Yeah, yeah. You look good. Uh, that is hot. You look oh, great, that's dude. Funny. Here we go. Oh, God. Oh. Whew, that was a fun day. Laughing. Yeah, you look great. Um, speaking of which, good thing uh, you do uh, yoga. Getting Jimmy dressed up as a flat earther, you got him dressed up as Payne Stewart, didn't you? I want you to watch this. <laughs> What the fuck was this? This is so good. Oh, that's uh. There you go. Holy Look at that. <laughs> uh, I said, dress up and make sure you look like a golfer. There you go. Holy two in a row. We have a event coming up. The Sturgeon County is uh. There you go. Holy two in a row. Sturgeon County. Paper Woods. Um, has a uh they're the ones that do the lawns and everything in in yeah. this area they're having a golf tournament for all the workers and it's at the garrison and they want us doing a hole and they asked us if we would do like closest to the pin and they want all three of us involved and i'm like ah i jimmy doesn't golf right like <laughs> he doesn't have clubs sure or he does. Like that. so well i called i called jody who is on the right who is the assistant pro mm-hmm. and i said can you can we help out? So they outfitted Jimmy, measured him, they made him clubs. Ian, go. the guy that works at the course with Jody and him, mm-hmm. made him clubs. And this was the 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 lessons to get him um, ready to go for the for the thing on September first. So we got it all. We're all set up. Yeah. So people will come golfer. through. Yeah. People will come through and 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 they'll roll dice and whoever's name shows up that person has to golf and then everybody has to beat my shot or Grant's shot or Jimmy's shot. And then, and then if they're closer than us, they get in, entered into a draw. I think it's like a thousand bucks stuff West yet or something like that. So it's a oh, good wow. prize too. That is pretty good. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> I was more referring to you getting him dressed up in a kilt and a beanie. Uh, that was because... not my decision. He made this, this was uh, the wardrobe choice was his. Jimmy doesn't need to be talked this. into dress up. He's a he loves dressing up. Yeah, like I said, it Jimmy. didn't take much to twist his arm to throw that globe costume on and send him to a flat earth conference. <laughs> this, and this is what PP wants to protect. PP yeah. wants to protect your right to dress up a midget and send him around to look like an idiot. Yeah. I might and vote that's for why PP's getting my vote. We need to be less woke. 
<laughs> I gotta tell I'm so torn because I'm like, the world needs to be a better place. And then when I look at you getting him dressed up like, you know, Payne Stewart if he got put in a trash compactor, I fucking <laughs> love it so much. And I'm like, nah, I, I would love to see more of this. I don't want this to be a preventative podcast. We're like, yeah, we've got a job to do to be better, but fuck, we can still laugh at funny shit, right? That's funny. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's exactly what I think, right? I think I think we are getting a little bit better. I'm seeing signs that we're coming out of it a little bit, that we're getting our sense of humor back. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm seeing less fist fights in the grocery store, right? And things people are calming down a bit, right? I think I think we're a little less angry right now. That's not cool uh, though, because I, I I found those entertaining. I miss those. You're right. We're not seeing enough fights of those. in the grocery yeah. stores. Yeah, I did too. Like the. Yeah. people screaming at people for wearing masks and then hitting them with like an avocado and shit. Like I yeah. missed that. Yeah. That was, was a fun time. Literally at Loblaws like a week ago. <clears throat> and we'll end with this. Loblaws a week ago. And I was standing there because I had two items. I'm like, no big deal. Got two items. I'll just stand here, wait to go through the express lane. And I was not wearing a mask. Chose not to. Actually, I forgot mine. And I'm like, eh, whatever. I'll just zip in, grab two things. I'll zip out. And the person in front of me um, was very uncomfortable with me being behind them. And I was like six, eight feet behind them. And they're like, could you go find another line? And I'm like, sorry, bud. Really? Wow. Yeah. Sorry. And he's, he's like, please. And I'm like, no, I'm not doing that. I said, but what I will do is I'll, I'll put my shirt over my nose just in case, like, if that, that helps. He's like, no, I'm just uncomfortable with you being anywhere near me. And I'm like. I'm vaccinated. You know, I've been vaccinated like four times. She's like, this person's like, I'm not. And I'm like, but you're wearing a mask. And she's like, I I need to leave. And she had a full meltdown. Walked, I don't know, two aisles over, looking for people with masks, started yelling at someone else in the line about the mask. And I'm like, hey, whoa, 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 whoa. I didn't say this to her, but I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. And out out of nowhere, this guy's like, I was watching and kind of laughing. I'm like, eh, it's not my barbecue. I was nice to her, even though this person's clearly not well. Not well. Out of nowhere, this guy who's standing there with his, and we all know that guy. He's got two kids, didn't want to have to go get groceries. He's getting groceries. His kids are pissing him off. They're yelling. Yeah. Out of nowhere, this guy goes, shut the fuck up. Yeah. There's that guy, too. I love that. That helps. I am that guy. Oh, we're still in it. All right. Yeah, All right. yeah. We're still in it. I like the content here. Today. Yeah. Before anyway. before we go, can I can I just say one thing? I wish we would keep even out of the pandemic are the dots. Yep. Don't fucking stand near me. I'm down yeah. with that. Can we just floor? stay away from each other? You know what I mean? Like I'm down for that. Yeah, like an extra two feet isn't going to get you to the till any faster. No, right? I, I've always given people their space anyway. I I, I don't know. I, I didn't. I didn't. I felt like it was a little unnecessary. I mean, um. I, I actually I used to have a problem with it before the pandemic. They used to you, you feel those feel those people fucking almost breathing on the back of your neck while you're putting stuff on the belt. Those, yeah, and I used to. I and the, before the pandemic, I'd be like, "Can you fuck off? Like, yeah. why are you yeah. here? You know." And now I, I don't mind. I, just, I don't I, mind I, the jobs, but I, this. I I think I've always sort of tried to give people their own space. I actually yeah. just based on this cold. I've been. I literally feel like a human fucking pinata for the last two weeks. <laughs> I'm like. Fuck, man. I've, I've said this more than once. Yeah, maybe we should have kept the masks. I wish I wish it was still a thing because I might not be like I literally feel like I'm dying every morning when I get up. This fucking cold is just stuck right here. And, Dude, your uh, favorite stone sea witch, your favorite lady in Nova Scotia. Hail Satan masks. masks would make people go away. Get Scotty on the Hail Satan masks and we'll all get them. And when you go into a shop and you strap that bitch on. That's yeah, nice. tell you want to hail Satan throw pillows right now. So Is when he? he's done yeah. that, we'll get yes. him on the masks. Okay, good. We'll need <laughs> the throw pillows and we need the hail Satan. We also need a hail Satan sh- shower. Blanket. We tried a night, but scrubbers. we didn't have any. <laughs> a mug for the office. Hail Satan. Yep. All right. You too. Great mug. Good to see you. Uh, thanks for doing this, see boys. Really HR. appreciate it. What's that? All right. See you in HR. I'm going to uh, go thanks. eat more pepperoni and, uh, and Oreos. It. Do it. Good and for you, Larry. It. At Lachlan Cross or at Larry, uh, you can get him anywhere you get 
Get your podcast and listen to them at 957 Cruise FM in Edmonton every single week to morning. Host of The Locker Room. Uh, yep. Follow them on Twitter at Lachlan Cross. The host of The Lens Report. Subscribe, download wherever you get your podcast. Audio version only. Lens Report. Ryan Lindley at Ryan Lindley on Twitter. Give him a follow, too. Thanks for doing this, bud. Great to see you. Thank you, sir. See you tomorrow. I'll talk to you soon. And I'm Dean. And that's it. <clears throat> We're done. I'm done, done, Junior. Have a great day. Especially you, Jamie Sallet. I'll see you in October. I'm coming to your fire and ice an evening with you and Theo Fleury. Promises to be the best content I've maybe ever seen. Hope everybody joins us. We're all going to have some fun. Uh, thanks to you for listening. Thanks to our friends and partners over at Easy Auto Financial for making this possible as well. If you're looking for a vehicle, uh, you're having a hard time with financing, or you just need someone to do all the legwork for you. Maybe your credit's not great. Listen, these guys do everything from start to finish. doesn't matter what it is. If you have an issue when it comes to buying a vehicle, easyautofinancial.ca. Check them out today. They get free financing for everybody. They get everybody financing. doesn't matter what your credit rating looks like, and then they take care of all the details that you hate taking care of when you go buy a new vehicle. It's a pain in the ass. These guys take all the guesswork out of it, and they work with you to make sure you get what you want. Easyautofinancial.ca. Check them out. No obligation today. Again, easyautofinancial.ca. Uh, Rob Kivlikin and his group of professional attorneys, defense lawyers at kivlaw.ca. We are powered by them. Wonderful people who help you navigate the legal system. If you did something you shouldn't have, maybe you didn't, and you're being called to do something about something that had nothing to do with you, and you need great legal representation. You need someone that's going to hold your hand, kind of explain everything, talk you through the system, give you every opportunity for you to maintain that freedom that is so important to every single person in this country. Go to our Kiv Law. That's super simple. Again, kivlaw.ca. Uh, and his defense attorneys will help you no matter what. Here's his email address, too. This is his personal email address, robert at kivlaw.ca. Talk to him today if you got an issue. Trust me, he is wonderful. Absolutely one, one of the nicest people. I, like, dude, I don't trust lawyers. I don't trust anybody. I trust him with everything I have, and you should, too. Kivlaw.ca. And last but not least, of course, Ed's Fine Imports and his Gitch. Uh, underwear, boxer briefs, pouch at the front. You can't miss uh, these things are incredible, by the way, and come in a ton of different colors. If you want black, he's got black, he's got orange, he's got black and gold. He's got red. I think he's even got a yellow now. Very nice yellow. Like a hue. It's a hue of yellow. E either way, they're the best underwear you'll ever buy, fellas. Like, swear to God. Move to the boxer briefs. Move to the, the underwear with the pouch. Enough of the tidy whities Enough of the bikini briefs. Enough of the boxers. No one does boxers anymore. You do boxer briefs. They hold everything in place. Give you a little tree fort for your junk. These are your underwear. Gitch3 is your promo code. He'll send you a free pair when you use it at checkout if you buy three or more. Also, he's also got a ton of clothes from men and boys. It's what they do at Ed's Fine Imports. So massive online store. Go there today. Again, promo code is Gitch3. Uh, other promo codes, tips for dressing, that kind of stuff as well. And you give them your email address. I think you get 15% off everything you purchase when you check out as well. So do that today. Edsfineimports.com. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a wonderful day. Uh... Learn what you are saying before you say it, right? If you're walking around going, I'm going to get rid of wokeism. Learn what the fucking meaning of the word is before you decide that you're going to be fighting against social justice and racial equality. Hey, Pierre and your wife, what a boner today. Have a great day, everybody. See you more. Bye.